my name is Megan Bennett and I work here at the Farmington Public Library and today I'm going to talk to you about knitting. And so if you'll follow me down, I will show you what's in the bag. So, in your knitting bag, you will find a pair of standard length size 7 needles, they're a little long. You will find a ball of variegated, which means it's multicolored, cotton worsted weight yarn. And what that means is it's just a thick cotton yarn that would make a really good dishcloth. It's not particularly soft, but it makes a nice scrubby dishcloth. And you will also find a pattern. It has, on the back, it has three patterns that are very basic knitting patterns. In fact, I learned to knit on these three patterns. Okay. And then you will find uh, sets of written instructions for casting on knitting, purling, which is another knitting stitch, and binding or casting off, which is how you end a knitting project. Now before I demonstrate how to cast on, which is the very first thing you need to do, I want to say two sentences about something called dye lots. So you might not be able to tell very well from the video, but these two yarns have the same name. They're both uh, Crown Jewel Ombre but they're wildly different colors. And that's because they're different dye lots. So if you're ever doing a knitting project that is bigger than a dishcloth, always make sure that your yarn has the same dye lot. There'll be a set of numbers, usually up along the paper wrapping, that says when and where the yarn was dyed. If they're matching, that way you can combine your two yarns together and no one will notice, but these are wildly different in person. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is demonstrate how to cast on, knit, purl, and bind off. Now you might see binding off uh, referred to as casting off, and it's fine. It's the exact same stitch. Um, there are a bunch of different ways to bind on. There are a bunch of different ways to bind off. There's one way to knit, one way to purl. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate the cast on technique that I learned, first cast on technique that I learned. Uh, you could always refer to the packet that came in your, in your craft bag if you want to see pictures of casting on. As the, the person that we took a tutorial from casts on a little bit differently than I do. But if you're looking at this and you still can't figure it out, we have a uh, database called Creative Bug that is free with your library card. You just go to our website, infoway.org, click on online resources, and then creative bug. It's under C on our a database A to Z listing. And you create an account and it's free with your library card. And they have lots of videos on knitting, purling, and casting. Oh, now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my rings off so they don't get caught on the yarn. If you're wearing jewelry like that, you might want to take them off so they don't get caught. So, the first thing you do when you do a cast on is you take your yarn and you pull it out, oh, a couple of inches to the end. And you just tie a quick little knot, just like that. It's a slip knot. And the reason for that is, oops, I pulled it out. What happens? Is that you can slip the knot from side to side. You can slip the yarn through. Now you're going to pull. Slot, you're going to slip your needle through the slip knot. You're going to slide everything onto the left needle. So you're going to make sure that that little knot is on the left needle. It really doesn't matter what side the knot is on, especially for beginning, like the, for a dishcloth or, or beginner knitter, beginning knitter. But you want to make sure that the tail, the tail is what we call the yarn that you are not knitting with, is held in, in this case, your left hand. So now we're going to do, this is a basic knit stitch, is how we're going to create our stitches. So we're going to slide the, the needle through the yarn, wrap the yarn around the needle, pull the yarn out, and then transfer it quickly onto the needle. And you're just going to do that for, let's just do 12 stitches to start. So let me see if I can make sure that this is being very carefully seen. And again, if you're watching this and you're not quite sure, or you can't quite see it, you can go to a creative bug. There are also a lot of knitting bloggers out there who have uh, knitting tutorials. Okay. So, so we've got 
four stitches here. I'm going to make a total of 12. Then we're going to take the right hand needle, slide it through the bottom of the stitch, wrap the yarn around the needle, pull the yarn through, and then put it back on the needle. Okay. And don't worry too much about twisting. It'll, it will look good at the bottom. Uh, and as I said, there are many, many forms of cast on. I usually use something called the long tail cast on. It's much faster, but it is um, uh, relatively complicated, and it's not usually recommended for beginners. Okay. I'll go a little quicker here. Nope. And if you ever stick your needle through part of your yarn, just pull your needle out and just kind of pull around so you get all four strands of your four ply yarn. Okay. Cotton yarn is uh, what we call splitty in the knitting world, which means it likes to split itself from its uh, twisted strands into separate strands. So two, four, six, eight, four more. Oh, so you're good, we got a color change here. This will be helpful. So you're gonna put, stick your right hand needle through, slightly different color, wrap it around and pull out. And then put that onto there. If this looks like it's taking a really long time, I am doing this extra slowly so that it, it's easier for you to see. All right, carefully make sure that last stitch is not twisted. Double count, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. Okay. And you kinda wanna spread those stitches out a bit on the needle. Okay. So making sure you keep your tail yarn to the side and your working yarn on the right side, you're gonna start knitting. So again, I'm gonna do this as slowly and carefully as I can. So take your right hand needle, slide it. You're gonna point your, you're gonna point your needles like this, and you're gonna slide the needle through the bottom of the yarn. See, it slid there. Make sure you get all of your yarn. You can do the same thing you did on that cast on stitch. You're gonna wrap the yarn around the needle. You're gonna pull through. But instead of, instead of creating a new stitch, you're gonna slide that first stitch off the needle and onto the right hand needle. Okay, so you're going to slip, wrap, pull, off. Slip, wrap, pull, off. Now there's a slightly funnier way to remember it. It's a little bit easier to remember, but it's not entirely prim and proper. So the not entirely prim and proper way, the easier way is stab it strangle it, and toss it off a cliff. Stab it, strangle it, toss it off a cliff. Slightly easier to remember, yeah? But it's the same motion. You're, you're picking up the stitch, you're creating the knit stitch, and then you're transferring the yarn from, you're transferring the new stitch to the knit, other needle. So you're picking up the old stitch, you're creating the new stitch, and you're transferring that new stitch to the needle. You're picking up the old stitch, creating the new stitch, and transferring the new stitch. Okay? Picking up, creating, transferring. Picking up, creating, transferring. Okay. Now I'm gonna very quickly do two more rows so that you can see some of what it looks like. Now a lot of dis dishcloths or washcloths have a cast on of about 
32 to 42. So you'd cast on those stitches and you keep doing it. Now, I'm going to do two more rows just so you can see what garter stitch looks like. But again, we're going to, so you get to a new row, you're going to go in, around, through, off. Right, so whichever way you prefer, remember in, around, through, off, in, around, through, off. Pick up stitch, create stitch, transfer stitch, off stitch. Create, uh, pick up, create, transfer, remove. Pick up, create, transfer, remove. Pick up, create, transfer, remove. Or stab it, strangle it, throw it off a cliff. Stab it, strangle it, throw it off a cliff. Stab it, strangle it, throw it off a cliff. This is just the basic knit stitch. Cotton yarn is also what we call grippy, which means it likes to grip the needle that it's working on, which makes it a really good yarn for beginners. I'm going to do one more row, and then I'm going to show you purl stitching. So just so you can see the beginnings of what we call garter stitch. So garter stitch is the basic beginning knit stitch. It is the first stitch most people learn how to knit. Uh, if you were a Doctor Who fan, it is how they knit uh, for Doctor Four's scarf with straight garter stitch. And it kind of makes these, these little ridges that are called garter ridges. Now we're going to demonstrate the purl stitch. Uh, if you knit the front and knit the back, you get garter stitch. If you knit the front and purl the back, you get stockinette stitch. If you flip those, you get reverse stockinette. Looks exactly like stockinette in reverse. And if you purl the front and purl the back, you get reverse garter. Most people just call that garter stitch. All right. Now, purl stitching is knitting only a little more complicatedly. It's exactly mirror imaged. Get my yarn pieces here. Okay. So for purling, you want to... You usually start with your yarn, your needles, more or less straight as opposed to knitting's tight V. So straight, you want to make sure you keep that yarn nice and tight. You want to do the same stitch only backwards. So let me get this started. That first stitch isn't going anywhere. Okay, so you slide in. You're going to poke yourself right about right there, right where I've got that little thing on my hand. You're going to poke yourself right in the knuckle. You're going to wrap the yarn around the needle. And transfer the stitch, you're going to take it off. So you're going to slip through, poke yourself in the finger, wrap your yarn around, transfer the stitch off. So slip through. Let's see if we can get that better. There we go. You slip through, poke yourself in the finger, wrap the yarn around the needle, slide it off. So slip, trans slip, wrap, transfer off. Slip, wrap, transfer off. Nope. And if you ever do that, don't worry about it. Just unwrap the yarn from your needles, un untwist up your needles, take that stitch that you did back onto the original needle and just redo the stitch. It happens all the time. You notice how that makes a slightly different pattern right there? That's uh, stockinette. Now we're going to demonstrate I'll do this again. Now, the first stitch is always the most complicated for purling. And that's simply because with the yarn, the yarn is kind of loose on this last stitch. So you might notice that your ends look a little tight on stockinette stitch. But 
Don't worry about it. Uh, if, you're doing, if you're starting with your pearls, you will get better with that in time. So pull that tight, slide the yarn, slide the needle in, pull it tight again. You're gonna want to try to have a little X or you poke yourself in the finger. Wrap the yarn around the needle, slide it out, pull it out. And then just keep doing that. And if you ever think you, you missed something, don't worry about it. Just pull back out till you have the proper number of stitches on both needles to equal your total number. For a dishcloth, a lot of the stitch counting and stitch markers that you might see in fancier patterns, they're not as much of a big deal for dishcloths, um, since most dishcloths have a pattern repeat that is uh, do pattern until last four stitches. It's pretty easy to count up four stitches. But if you're casting on, say, 256 stitches, that is a 16 stitch repeat, repeated 16 times, you're definitely going to want uh, some stitch markers. All right, let me turn this around. Oh, get to the end of this row, turn it around, and do it again for you. And if your yarn ever gets caught around your needle, just pull it off. Uh, if your working yarn gets caught. Also make sure you don't knit with your tail. Okay. This is the last row I'm gonna do on, on um, pearls and then I'll get us writing it, writing the binding off. So again, I'm gonna pull the stitches down a little bit so they're a little bit more visible. Okay. Gonna slide through, twist it over, wrap around. Pull off. You notice these stitches are a little bit looser than the last set. That's because not that. Okay. Ah, so you see here, I did something a little, little interesting. It's actually a good learning experience. What I did was in the knitting world called I slipped a stitch and then I yarned over. And what that means is Instead of purling the stitch, I simply moved it over but kept the yarn where it was supposed to be. So if you wanted to fix that, let's see, you would simply pull the yarn through to create, you'd simply pull this yarn off and then carefully pull that purple yarn through the ice blue. It's a little easier said than done, but it is doable. And then, see, now I have the extra stitch. It's also twisted, so I'm going to twist it back around, make sure it looks right. And then I'm going to do this. Perfect. Come on, there you go. I didn't completely get all of that yarn off there. You can see I make a lot of mistakes while I'm knitting. So I'm just going to slide that off so that it completely got all four strands of the yarn. Slips, slipping stitches and yarn overs are the most common knitting er errors, and they're not particularly bad. If you catch a yarn over, like I did right there, when you start the next row, it's really easy just to pop the stitch back where it's supposed to be and fix, so that, and fix it up so your pat you don't see the yarn over in your pattern. Uh, what a yarn over is, is a way to add stitches if you're doing what would be termed increasing. Um, the second, and then of course, slipping a stitch is where you move the yarn from needle one to needle two without knitting it or purling it. Uh, another common mistake is called a knit two together, which is exactly what it sounds like. Instead of knitting one stitch, you knit two of them at the same time. And uh, that is oftentimes used as a decrease stitch. So now we've got a nice little pattern going there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the bind off process. Bind off or cast off, as it is referred to in your packet, is where you take to, you're doing you're intentionally knitting your stitches together so that they form a single line. Um, so you're doing again the basically the opposite of what you did when you cast on. So you can bind off and purl. You can bind off and knit. You can bind off and pattern. 
we're just going to do a basic bind off in knit stitch. It's really not a big deal for a, um, a dishcloth. Uh, but if you do want to bind off in pattern, you can find videos on Creative Bug uh, or other knitting bloggers' websites. Or maybe you know someone in your family who knits and they might be able to show you how to bind off in pattern. So what bind off is just exactly like you're knitting. So you knit the first stitch. Go under, wrap around, transfer, slide off. And then you knit the second stitch. In, transfer, around, off. Now here's the tricky part. You take that first stitch, the stitch on the, my right, right here where my thumb is, and you take it and you pull it over the other stitch until you only have one stitch. So you know that those two stitches are now one. And then you knit this third stitch. And then you do it again. You take that stitch, the stitch that was number two, and you wrap it around stitch number three. Then you knit stitch number four. You pull it through. So if you're doing this properly, you should only ever have one stitch on your bind off needle. And if you're doing it in purls, it's just the exact same thing. You're just purling instead of knitting here. This is the easier one of the two. And you see I'm getting to the end, so this is stitch 10 over stitch 11 to get just stitch 11. I can pick up stitch 12. Okay, here's where it gets a little complicated. So now all you have is that stitch. Now if I'd been smart, I would have brought a pair of scissors, which is the only other thing you'll need, and I would have cut my yarn about here. Okay, and I would do just one final stitch. You would pull the yarn through and tighten it out. Cut that, pull it out, and then you have a little tiny dishcloth. Okay. And that is how you get the uh, get your cast on. Your bind off is both visible there. You've got your knits and your pearls. Cute little dishcloth. Maybe a doll's dishcloth. And then, of course, the final step is weaving in the ends. And if you're very interested in knitting, you'll need something called a yarn needle, which has a very big eye. It's big enough to stick uh, four-ply or even, in some cases, super bulky yarn, which is really, really bulky stuff. You might knit, say, a warm fleece blanket out of that uh, to, to knit that through, to pull that through. And you would just weave the ends in following along in pattern until your ends disappear. Cut them off, and then you'd, uh, your dishcloth cloth, cloth would be ready to use, although I always suggest washing your cotton dishcloths before you use them. So that is the basics of knitting and purling. And if you look at your pattern and you're like, uh, no, I'm not quite sure what the numbers mean, there will be a second video where I demonstrate, where I talk you through what a knitting pattern looks like and how to read a knitting pattern.